Today, I'm going to take a look at Vallejo's acrylic surface primer. It's an acrylic polyurethane primer, and it's the one that I use all the time now. It comes in a number of shades. This is the gray, which is my preferred one, but there's also a black and a white, which are very useful, and a range of other, well, what I would call military shades, greens, browns, sands, that kind of thing. You can mix them all together, so you can create your own custom shades, and uh, that's very flexible. The primer comes in a range of bottle sizes. There's the 70 milliliter uh, dropper bottle, like all the Vallejo paints. There's a larger 60 mil bottle, and there's this one, a monster 200 milliliter bottle, and this is the one I've got, and this is gonna last me a very long time indeed. And I paid somewhere between 10 and 11 pounds for this in my local model shop. Now you can use the primer with a normal paintbrush, but you can also use it through an airbrush. And later in this video, I'll show you both of those in action. Um, but before we move on, there is one tip I want to point out for you. If you look closely, you can see that if you leave the primer for a while, and I've done this deliberately to show you, the pigment sinks to the bottom and the carrier is left at the top. So my first tip for you is it's very important to give this a thorough shake. I've heard of people having problems getting a matte finish with this, and I think a lack of uh, shaking thoroughly is the main cause of that. So that's what I'm gonna do now, get on with the shaking, and I'll be back in a few minutes with a paintbrush. So here we are. This is what it looks like after you've given it a good shake and put some primer out onto the palette. As you can see, it's quite a runny consistency already, and uh, it doesn't really need thinning for paintbrush application. Um, so we're all good to go. Uh, there's no need to use an expensive brush on this. Keep your Kalinsky sables for better things. Uh, this is just an old Citadel brush and it's a simple job of getting on with applying the paint. Um, like so. Now, don't worry if you put it on a little too thickly because um, actually as it dries, this primer tend to sort of, well, I can only describe a shrink around the details of the figure and make sure that they're still there and visible for painting with. Now I have had some people post comments on the blog that they get bubbles when they're brush painting. Uh, I don't quite know how that happens. It's never happened to me. Um, as you can see, I'm not getting any now. So it's just a case of working your way around the figure slowly and steadily. So here's the figure uh, all finished and it's been drying now for about 10 or 15 minutes. And you can see that it's drying to a nice matte finish and all the details of the figure are still visible and showing through because of the way the primer shrinks as it dries. Now, I wouldn't paint over this figure yet. I leave it for at least 24 hours to really dry and for the primer to harden. And that way the chances of it rubbing off when you're working with it are much reduced. Now, when it comes to cleaning up your brushes, uh, normal water is just fine. I tend to keep a little jar with some water and washing up liquid mixed together for that purpose. And it's fine. So next we'll move on to airbrushing primer. Now, paint brushing, um, primer is fine when you only have one or two figures to do but if you've got to work on a whole unit of figures then it's quite a tedious exercise and that's where airbrushing comes into its own. Now before we start with the airbrush a couple of quick important health and safety things. One always make sure you're working in a well ventilated area and two you really ought to be wearing a face mask to protect your mouth and nose so you don't inhale particles. Uh, for the sake of this video, so that I can speak and be clearly heard, I'm not actually wearing the mask, but it doesn't mean to say you should do what I'm doing. So here we are. We have a small amount of primer in the colour cup. You just see it there. I don't know if you can see it. And what we're going to do is start with a very quick test see how the primer's coming out, there we go, that's good. And now we're really just gonna start with a light dusting around the figure just to get things started. Sorry about the compressor noise. And then gradually build that up 
as we go round. Now, as with brush application, don't worry too much if you overdo it slightly. It'll dry nicely and shrink in around the details of the figure. Um, but that's as quick as that. And I think we've captured most of that figure there already. And you can see it's much quicker than brush painting. So we'll leave that one to dry and come back and have a look at it in a few moments. So this is the figure that we airbrushed a few moments ago. Now dry nicely. You can see there's a good matte finish appearing already. And you can see that the details are perfectly visible. Even though I might have overspray slightly as this primer dries, it shrinks in around detail to preserve it. Now this is a good time to inspect the figures you've airbrushed uh, to see if you missed any little bits. And on this one, I noticed I missed a little bit on the bayonet. So I'm just going to sort that out now. And this is easier done with a brush afterwards. Um, there we go. And a couple of details I forgot to mention. I was airbrushing at about 20 PSI. Um, and the airbrush I use is an Iwata uh, Revolution BR. You may use different equipment, so you may find a different air pressure is suitable for you. But there we are. As before, you really need to leave airbrush prime figures to dry for 24 hours or so before you start painting on top of them. And in the time it took me to brush paint that one figure, I think I probably managed to airbrush paint four or five. So you can see it's a real time saving when you're working on, uh, say, whole battalions of figures. So let's wrap up now. Here's, here's a look at the two figures primed in different ways. Uh, the one at the front is the airbrush one, and what there is the brush painted one. No appreciable difference between the two, except the time saving on doing the airbrush one. And that really concludes what I wanted to say about uh, Vallejo Surface Primer today, except to mention, obviously, you need to make sure you clean your airbrush thoroughly when you're finished. And I use Vallejo's own airbrush cleaner for that purpose. So if you've got any questions about this primer or, uh, or this video, then feel free to uh, post a comment on my blog or on uh, YouTube. Thank you very much.